Before we start the video, just like to take the opportunity to remind everybody I have an email subscription list. The links for the sign up are in the description to the video below. So um, click the link, go over there, sign up, and I can keep everybody up to date with the latest projects and uh, artwork and videos, but also my latest book, which will be out early next year. It's uh, based around a very different version of death than we've seen in pop culture so far. He's coming out of retirement to help a transformed human soul to stop an ancient enemy from invading the Earth dimensions with his demon horde. It's action, adventure, pathos and heart all the way in this story. It's definitely got its feet firmly based in the Bronze Age and it's all ages. So um, check that out and uh, I'll be able to give you more information about that and the crowdfunder on that if you're part of the email list. Uh, I'll also make sure there's an extra perk in the crowdfunding for anybody who is on the email list. So with that, thanks very much for listening and on with the video. Hi there, welcome back to the dojo. This is Russ Leach, I'm the comic book black belt. And this is another quick video about techniques that you can use to really help your comic book art and storytelling process. Um, there's a great, uh, there's a great image out there if you go and look at it or look for it on Google. It's Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work. And that's specifically um, focused on how your panels can be made more interesting when there is exposition going on. So you've got a couple of characters talking to each other. And those that the, the, the panels that, that are within that image are, um, are great at uh, making interest. On, within the panels while your characters are talking to each other so not making it too visually boring um, but I think that expands out to all panels uh, across your book um, as you can see here I'm, I'm, I'm just flicking in a, a few panels just to show some um, different panel content so different panel types I suppose so you've got like uh, three quarter views from above which can um, which can uh, punctuate a scene quite well. So you could have a two shot of two people in a, in a, in a frame and then those same two people from, from a three quarter angle. So you're, you're breaking it up, you're moving around your um, characters and showing them in slightly different situations and positions while still carrying on a conversation or exposition of some sort. Um, but also you can go into like uh, close ups or two shots where you might have the back of someone's head and the, the side of their face looking further into the perspective and seeing um, the person they're talking to that little bit further away. You can add in rendering, you can add in uh, things like shadow in order to, to make a, a shot just that little bit more interesting. So you can still have a two shot. Uh, you have two two shots, one one behind the other, but just move around your characters so that the light is coming from a different pers uh, uh, different point of view, and that means that you can add interest to that shot, change the angle, look up, look down, uh, move out, and actually have whole characters in panels. Um, I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. But, but there was a great comic artist out there who did say you have to have at least one full figure per, per page. So within all your panels, you and unless, obviously then you get into exposition. If there's too much exposition, it's going to, to be dull. But if you, what you really need to do is as you move your story along, you should really have at least one panel where you have one or multiple figures that are full figures and you can see the whole figure. Otherwise, your story visually is probably getting too close to the action and things start to become a little bit confusing. So you need to get in and out as far as position is concerned, as far as depth is concerned, getting close and further away from your characters. This can be difficult when you've got writers uh, suggesting something uh, like uh, uh, they're very focused on the uh, emotional response and so emotional response is tied to seeing closer into a face um, don't get um, don't get fooled into thinking you have to be close in on every face in order to show the emotion of that face you can come further out um, and then of course it's the interaction between one character and another that's very important um, and 
having that distance going in and out of the action is extremely important. So these are just a, a few panels to show just variation of panels, really, how you can do different variations and different things. Um, what I've got here is is a is a story I did for Doctor Who, um, and I just wanted to bring this up as a sort of like a, a, a real world, rather than just me just flicking through some panels with some various uh, various positions and depths within those panels and saying, oh look, how, how this can make it more interesting. Actually seeing how moving around within the world you've created for your, your story, how it can make a difference and how you can how you can make one panel look different from another and so increase the, the visual stimula stimulation. Um, not just about, it's not just about reading the script, it's also about making the visual stimulating. So I've got this first panel, which is pretty straightforward. The, the, there's a spaceship crashed, it's back in the Old West. And uh, we've got the Doctor's um, uh, companion for this issue turning up. Um, and there's a fairly quiet scene that's going on here. Um, the spaceship has crashed, she's turned up, she's first suspicious of the Doctor, the Doctor calms her, and then they have a conversation. It's not a lot of action going on, so I had to get in and around the, the 3D space that the two of them um, uh, were in and, and make it interesting, make the, the, uh, the story move forward, but at the same time not just have talking heads. Um, so you had to zoom in and out of, of, of their uh, close environment. Um, so you can see there's, there's, there's like a close-up of the Doctor or a mid-close-up of the Doctor, then it stretches out three quarters looking down. And then we've got coming around behind the Doctor, past his face with her, um, his, uh, his new friend further into the distance, and then zooming all the way out and seeing the full bodies of the horses and the characters and the spaceship and the background. So. It's trying to keep it as, as visually stimulating as possible, but while we'll zooming the, the eye in and out. Then we get onto this page. Uh, again, it's quite quiet. There's a, there's a, 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 a ride back into town. Uh, they're talking while they're riding back into town. The sun comes up. Um, so it's, it, it, the, the first panel is, is, is a, again, full of the horses and, and the, the doctor and the companion riding the horses. And then you come around the side, look across from one side, from one per one character to the next, so that you can see what they're talking about. You zoom out again, see them come into town, and then the action starts to, or the, the story starts to take a slightly different turn, and I'm setting up for the next page, which is a big splash. Uh, you've got riders coming towards you, lots of action. And then you zoom around the side, of those, uh, those those villains coming riding into town so that you can get a view of the action of what's happening here as the Doctor pushes away his assistant while the, 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 the bad guys steam through on their horses. Then you get another three quarters shot and then a close in shot on what the Doctor's doing next. And then again, you've got another quieter moment uh, this time while the, while the, the, the villains are, are chatting amongst themselves. And notice it focused on the lead bad guy at the top panel then it zooms around while he talks to the rest of the men. And then there's a quiet moment where the, the, the dullard of the group uh, has the, their horse uh, nicked from them by, by the doctor and his assistant and, um, and replaced with another horse. And, and then we, we move on through the story, so I, I won't go any further. But, but the whole point being is that you have to mix up your panels and it's a combination of things. It's a combination of making the story flow uh, so that so that the reader wants to go from one panel to the next, making it flow so that it makes sense. Then from a visual perspective, making it interesting so that they see a progression and movement of the world and the characters within it. Uh, and then on top of that, making those the, the content of the panel, the angles and um, the characterization and the emotion work within the design of your page. And that's something I'll come on to in another video when I talk about how to lay out pages and um, and what an interesting design will, and how that would work, how uh, an interesting design of a page would work 
but still within the constraints of telling story properly and it not going off the deep end and just being a crazy layout where you can't follow a story at all. So hopefully uh, that's been of some use to you. Um, my you know, insight on the way I see viewing, uh, doing, pr producing panels, the content of panels, angles within panels and making them interesting and sort of mixing them up enough to make it uh, make it flow with the story but also entertain the eye as it were so um, thanks very much for watching the video uh, if you're a subscriber already thank you very much for subscribing um, I'm constantly going to say thank you because it's, it's humbling to have people do that I've had a few more subscribers this week that's great thanks also over on BitChute uh, please like share um, if you can share the videos that really helps on YouTube for me uh, you can also find me on Instagram and uh, look me up on my website as well. And remember, if you can, sign up for the email uh, subscription list so I can keep everybody up to date with new videos and also with the progress of my book. Videos on the progress of the book will start coming end of September, early October, and I can really start showing artwork off to you guys then. Um, once again, thanks very much for being with me today in the dojo, and I'll see you again with another video real soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Comic Book Black Belt. If you've enjoyed the content from this video, please like, share or subscribe and come over and follow me on Twitter. It's been great having you in the dojo. See you again soon.